I've got this up on these calls so that this, the legs go all the way through and they, that, that won't cause me any hangups. I've got all my parts. I've got my footrest. It's labeled at the top. I've got all my other parts labeled. My legs are still labeled. Everything's good to go. Okay. I've also got my uh, glue here. Now we're using hide glue. We're using, this is the old brown blue hide glue, but I'm also gonna start working with this glue that uh, Chris Forrest has been making over at Lost Art Press. They've been making this uh, stuff. It's a little dangerous. They make them in little gummy flavors. I'm like, someone's <laughs> gonna eat these. Somebody's gonna yeah, it just seems like a re <laughs> really courting disaster. But it, what? It's not a human child, certainly a dog yeah. or cat. Yeah, somebody's gonna yeah. go after that. It may be me, I don't know. But um, I wanna try that out anyhow. It seems like he's having fun with it and doing cool stuff. So I've got everything here. Now my leg joints, I'm gonna address a certain way. So these ends here have been in the kiln and they've oxidized and we've been putting them and testing them and probably rubbing them, licking them. I don't know what we're doing with these, but I know that the surface is probably not at, at its best anymore. So I go through and I just give a quick scuff sand with a 150 grit here to each of these tapered tenons, okay? And then I get all the stuff off of them. That's just, I just want good glue adhesion to all my joints. Now these joints, recall, these have been turned, but they were turned only after the piece was dead dry, okay? Bone dry. So, and this just came out of the kiln, so these should be the correct size, okay? Because they were turned dry and they've been kept dry. So, what you might find though, because they were turned by a human, that was me, you might find that they don't fit perfectly right now. They're too big, okay? So, if it won't fit in there, there's a couple things I need you to do or you want to do, which is to again take the sandpaper and sand just, just the tenon end, just a little bit, okay? Don't get distracted while you do this. You'll blow right past a good joint. Okay, don't be talking about other stuff while you're just like cranking away on this thing and it's a great conversation. Next thing you know, this is not a good joint any longer. As I said the other day, what we want to be able to do is to put the joint about halfway in there before it really seizes and then it has to be hammered in. Okay, the rest of the joint is a hammer fit joint. Okay, that's what we're going for. So I want you to take each of your uh, parts and test them, you know, preferably in, in where they're going to go. But even if not, at least you could test them and go, yeah, that's, that's going to fit. Okay, and if it's not, we want to know it. Okay, and then what you do is you just, again, take a piece of sandpaper, put it right on the joint, and rub it just a few times, check it again. All right, I just wanna get these to the right size if they're not already. Um, these side stretchers are going in only three quarters of an inch, remember? Okay, and then this back stretcher is going in a full inch as well as the front. So what I've done is I've made a mark on there all the way around. One little mark doesn't help as much because when you pick up the piece and you're thinking about a million other things in the middle of the glue up and you're like, where's the mark? Oh, I'm hitting it together and it's on the wrong side. Very confusing. Just make the mark all the way around. One inch, one inch, and these are the three quarters. Three quarters three okay? Quarters. You know, so I always just like to stand back and like survey my kingdom and be like, I like the way this looks for gluing up. This, this feels good for me to start this process. Okay, there's a couple other things I'm gonna need, which is a dead blow and a hammer. I didn't bring those over. A dead blow and a hammer. The dead blow is for whenever I'm hitting wood like this, to put something together. The hammer is for when I'm hitting something like this, the tenon to put it together. Okay, I just like to localize the force with a, with a smaller hammer to help, help me keep it in line with things. The other thing I need that I forgot is I like to use a magazine just as something I can put down on the tabletop so that when I'm hitting things together, I have something soft underneath it and it's not gonna dent my work. You know, nothing worse than denting your work at this stage of the game. This is for cleanup, I don't need it right here, so I'm gonna move it. I'm going to move the excess glue off of here because we don't want to knock things around while we're doing this. Yeah. Paper towels. Okay. There we go. All right. That's just for clean up in a bit. Okay, so I start by putting my two front legs. Okay, so that is my right front. I'm just going to go over here. This is my left front. They're going to go in here. Now, there's a bunch of clues that happen. This can help you a lot, even though your brain is like not working, your eyes are. So if ever I'm putting something together like this, and I go, yep, yeah, I've got it in there, and that's where my footrest goes, why would there ever be a hole over there? <laughs> there isn't ever a hole over there. The stretcher going in front of the chair doesn't ever happen. So try and be observant of little things like that. That's like, I see that all across the room. I'm like, oh, I know it's off. So when you put these two in here, and I see two holes over here, I'm like, that's gotta be right, okay? Use those clues to your advantage. I think you'll be happy you did. Okay, now this says top. That doesn't mean I put it like this. It's top to the chair, okay? Another thing to keep in mind. It's a little fun landline we plant for ourselves that we, we label things like this. 
but we do it upside down, okay? So now I'm gonna put this in here. I'm gonna glue this in. I'm gonna glue my two front legs together and then my two rear legs together. That's the first step, okay? So I'm gonna take this out. Now, one nice thing about the glue is it's reversible with heat, but that's, that's sort of a misnomer because what happens is not like you could take the whole chair apart if you just heated it up. What it means is that you can add fresh glue and re-glue a joint using heat. You could loosen the joints with enough heat, but generally the whole point is if something comes loose, that's what the reversible part means, is that you could actually re-glue it. And that's nice because if a chair ever comes loose, as we were talking about, you can fix it. Okay, so I'm gonna put some glue in here and I'm gonna need my wedges, I bet they're behind me. And then I'm gonna glue this up. Did you notice how I used the orientation of this sitting here to help me? I put it in the position it was gonna be in the chair I'm gonna glue this all the way around. Just a real thin layer of glue. You don't have to uh, goop it up too terribly much. And then I'm gonna put this in here and it goes like this, okay. This is a nice way to squeeze that in there. And then if I want to, at the very last second, because remember the thickness of the glue is gonna make the joint even tighter, right? Okay. Now, some of y'all were gonna be using wedges down there. Remember we talked about that? This is a great time to drive a wedge in there. Okay, from the bottom, and that will indeed make your joint really nice and tight. Okay, I'll do this one here. Glue ups need not be super stressful, and this one's pretty easy because for the most part, you can glue up one or two joints at a time. Okay, glue ups get pretty scary when you're doing you know 15 joints at a time kind of thing, um, but this is actually pretty simple. Something I want to point out to you as well is that whenever you're putting this together, you see these going at an angle. Often I see people trying to jam it in 90 degrees just because that feels natural to you. It's never going to go and it's very likely going to chip something out. So uh, be aware of that. And I'm not going to hit this here because this is hard. I'm going to use this. And I'm also not going to do it like this and hit this down onto there. Because if I hit it a little off center, it could move it and crack it, crack the leg. It's much better. Think of the parts you're driving in like wooden nails. I'm driving in a nail into the board. You don't drive the board down under the nail, okay? So, you heard that sound. Remember, this yes. is the only joint that we're bottoming out. Remember, we bottom these suckers out, okay? And now when you put it up here, it should be too close to fit. You see how it doesn't fit? That's good, that's because of the angle of everything, but when I spread them apart a little bit, it should drop right in, okay? And we'll do the rear ones, which I will put them in here first. Not gluing the legs into the seats now. No, no, it'd be very hard to get them out to put yeah. the other parts in, yeah. yep. Now when I put this in here, again, I have the same clues I had before, which is, do I have a joint here and joints going here? I do, I feel good about this. Now, which one of these goes in there? The one with the big tenons, okay? This is my back one. And this goes down to something we talked a little bit about before, which is the rotation of this matters if you want to um, you know, care about wood movement. So what I want, I'll just give you the rule of thumb of this, which is, see the growth ring here? When you see the growth rings at the edge of your feet here, that should be seen too. So that's the same point of view, a ring here and these rings there. The, the point of this is just that when this part is moving seasonally, it will move along the tangential plane the most. And what we're trying to avoid doing is rotating it like this, where this is moving, but legs don't get longer and shorter seasonally. And it would be stressing against the end grain of the joint and it would work itself loose in time, okay? So what we do is we rotate it. The only other way we have optional which is this way, and yes, the leg does move some this way. The confusing thing about people is they want to look at the legs and decide where the growth rings are. Don't. You want to know where the end grain of the leg is. So the mortise part, you care about where the end grain is. The tenon part, you care about the growth ring. Like, you'd see growth rings on here because it's end grain. Yes. Yeah. So in other words, when you see the end grain, you should see the growth ring is a way of doing it. So oh, that's, that's going to be my rotation. Okay, no worries. I just did a cameo in your video. You, you did a great cameo, so <laughs> I was counting on it. <laughs> and, you, and you said words, so now I think I owe you 400 bucks. I think that's, I think that's how that works. Oh, you, I you have I a should, line. I think it's all that recorded be, on yeah. film, too. I think okay. that should be left on the cutting room floor. Okay. <laughs> so now I've rotated it to the correct orientation. Remember, I checked all my joints ahead of time. I put this down like this. And it's important that I drive it. Remember what we said, the obtuse side is the side that counts. That's where we have our one inch measurement. So that's where I wanna see my one inch mark. So the line around it, one inch, actually buries on the top of the joint, okay? So I actually kept the one inch diameter going a little past that line. 
so that it would vary, okay? <clears throat> Remember I said this the other day, when you're putting together a box stretcher that's this close in, the distance between these things, as you all measured them, is a really important one. If you were willy-nilly about it and leave one a quarter inch out and one too tight, you're gonna throw everything out of whack because every leg is attached by two joints. So this is, this is one of the things that took me a while to realize was such a critical aspect of this chair. Now this one, unlike this one, I'm gonna have to worry about how these two legs move together when I put, them, put this next joint in. In other words, I can't do that or I don't want to, okay? So I need to make sure that they're co-planar as I hit them in, all right? I'm sorry to ask a dumb question, but will they be coplanar even if your rake and splay are not equal? So they're still going to be these, coplanar these, enough. No, no, the two fronts and the two backs are coplanar. The side ones are not. Okay, okay. They are not coplanar, but that's why we do these two first. Okay, one of the reasons. Okay, so first I'm going to fix them so that they're visually good, coplanar, right? Now when I hit this down, if you find that it's not coplanar, Often the joint will seize. By the way, don't talk too much when you're doing this because it's starting to swell and lock. But if I have trouble rotating it enough or correctly, you can often put some torque on it, put it on your hip, and when you hit it, you'll free the surface tension on the joint and be able to readjust it, okay? But for me right now, I'm just gonna try and knock this straight in. Okay, good. All right, that seems pretty good. Now these look good, and they're gonna drop in here. Okay, so that's those. Okay, breathe a sigh of relief, it's okay. Now I've got my left and my rights labeled here, I'm gonna put them in their position. Okay, so it's almost like ritualistic how I move through this so that I don't have to think and I don't put parts in the wrong place because it's a little easier to do than I think. Now I'm gonna check my glue to make sure it's both warm enough and flowing like a syrup, a relatively light syrup at this point, and if it needs a little bit extra, both heat and moisture, because remember, it's, it's losing both at the same time. It's evaporating off moisture. You don't want to make it super watered down, but I also don't want it to either be cold or gummy, because either one of those things is going to make it so it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Okay, now I'm going to pull this out, and I'm going to bring this over here, and I'm going to glue these in the back. Now when I glue this in, the rotation, remember what I just said, when you're looking at the end grain of the leg, you should see the growth ring here. Okay, that's your rotation. You know, it's like you can understand the concept or you, I can just give you a rule of thumb. Okay, and that's the rule of thumb you can use. So I'm gonna put some glue in here, some glue on here. I'm gonna rotate it to where I want it. Find where my line is, and I'm gonna start smacking it. Okay, that's good. So hopefully you can see, if you're set up for it, it does not need to be super stressful. I know people tend to freak out about glue ups, but if you just keep everything in the right places. Remember, it doesn't go square in, it goes in at an angle. So. Okay, if you split your leg a little bit, it's okay. All right, I'd rather split a leg on occasion than never split a leg. Okay, and when I say split, I mean a tiny little crack happens. One, it never affects the chair, okay? Two, it's a good sign your joints are tight enough, okay? If you never split a leg, your joints might not be tight enough, you know? So occasionally, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world to have happen to you. It's kind of like if you plant your crops in the spring and you don't lose one of them, you plant it too late, you know? So here we go. I'm gonna take this out now. Now, let's not make this chair, okay? <laughs> You, you laugh. I've seen things. No, I'm laughing because I know that that's what I'll do. Okay. And I'll have to catch myself. Now, in a, in a perfect world, these should line up pretty good. Okay? That's good enough for me. That's going to that's gonna work well. I didn't have to stress the, you know, Jesus out of it to get it to do that. So that's already a good sign for me. Okay? Yes, but you are Peter Gallagher. Yeah. Yeah, I've made some, some real corkers, though. So, okay. So I'm going to put glue in both of these now. So unlike the other joints, these have to go in together. Now, one thing I have to watch for this one, too, is that I don't twist everything. And when I say twist everything, I can put these joints in here, in here, and in here. Okay, they both have to start in at the same time. I'm going to give them a very light tap just to get them started. And then I want to make sure that my footrest and the, this joint back here, or that, that stretcher there, are coplanar. You see what I'm talking about? This one and that one right there. So I can see they're a little off twist. So as I, as I tap this one in, I'm going to torque this just a little bit. 
Okay, so now it's nicely coplanar. That way, hopefully, I can avoid having a twisted chair. And okay, that's sweet. All right, now the moment of truth. Don't put it together like this. It's backwards. Okay, it's really easy to do. I'm telling you, things things get harder as we as we get further in here. Now I'm just going to pull these back here and get everything in place for where it's going to be. And there they all go.